Hi, my name is Tom Heffel, and this channel is all about helping students understand chemistry. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about exceptions to the octet rule when it comes to covalent bonding. And there's kind of like three major categories. The first category is going to be an odd number of electrons, okay? So when you total up your valence electrons when you're doing covalent bonding, it should always equal an even number of electrons. If for some reason it's an odd number of electrons, ding, 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 you're probably doing something wrong, okay? However, there are a few rare situations where this can happen, but I'll be honest with you, okay? We do not do any of these problems in AP chemistry, okay? I've never seen uh, a problem with odd number of electrons, so that probably qualifies any type of honors chemistry class, AP chemistry class, probably even in your first year college class, I don't think you'll ever see a problem that has an odd number of electrons. So I tell my students, if you ever total up the electrons and you get an odd number of uh, valence electrons, you're probably missing something. So go ahead and double check because we don't do these types of problems in an in introductory class. Okay? But the other two categories we do. Okay? So we can have less than an octet. So if we have a valence shell that has less than eight electrons, there are certain situations where this does occur. And then the same thing, and we could have more than an octet. We could have uh, an atom that has, you know, more than eight electrons, but I want to explain those situations as well, okay? So let's go right into less than an octet and look at an example like that, okay? And the example that we're going to do is BF3. So we're going to total up the electrons. We got boron and fluorine. Uh, boron has three valence electrons. Fluorine has seven. So we got 21 and three for a total of 24 electrons. Once again, this is an even number. I feel pretty good. I don't have an odd number, so that's awesome, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach uh, the uh, fluorines to the boron and try to do some geometry here, okay? And that used up six electrons which means that there's 18 electrons left over, and I'm going to put those on the non-central atom. And that used up all 18 electrons, and there are none left, okay? Uh, so when I look at my central atom, okay, and it's, uh, it's boron here, okay, and the boron only has six valence electrons. It has less than an octet, okay? And... Typically, what we would do here in a regular covalent po uh, problem is this would be like a resonance problem where we would erase two electrons and put a double bond here to get boron up to eight, okay? But we could do it from here or here as well, so we'd have three drawings, okay? But this is going to be an exception to the octet rule, okay? And the reason for it, the explanation, is that boron's electronegativity is so much smaller than fluorines. Remember, fluorine's the electronegativity king, okay? So it attracts electrons really, really well. So these dipoles are humongous, okay? The electrons that are being shared here, they're really being pushed towards the fluorine, okay? And the reason why this is okay to have less than an octet is because there's no way these electrons are gonna flow in the opposite direction when their electronegativities are so drastically different. So this is one exception to where you can have less than an octet. Boron is actually perfectly fine with the six electrons here, okay? Um, and that's because of the drastic difference in electronegativities, okay? The way I help my students uh, remember, when can this happen, okay? How do I know when to do less than an octet? When do I know uh, to do uh, resonance, okay? Less than octet is typically set for elements like boron or beryllium when they're covalently bonding, okay? So that's kind of the rule that I use in my class. I got boron here with something that's very electronegative. It's okay to have less than an octet, okay? So let's move on to more than an octet. Maybe an example like KRF2, okay? So let's kind of do the bonding for it, and let's see if it can have more than an octet. So krypton has eight valence electrons, fluorine has seven. 
So if we do the math here, I believe that comes out to 22 electrons. So let's start building uh, this structure. Okay, so we got a couple bonds to fluorine. Those bonds cost us four electrons. Okay, so there's 18 electrons left over. Two, four, six, plus the bond gets it up to eight. Two, four, six, plus the bond gets it up to eight. So six and six, I use 12 electrons. There's six electrons left over, okay? So I'm going to place those six electrons on the central atom because I always place the leftovers on my central atom, okay? That's kind of the rule for covalent bonding, okay? Of course, uh, you know, um, when we look at this, okay, we see that krypton, okay, has a much, it has an expanded octet. Look how many electrons it has, two, four, six, eight, ten, okay? So when you have these leftover electrons, you do place them on the central atom, okay? And you can expand it beyond an octet, okay? Under one condition, okay? And that condition is if the central atom, okay, is in period three, okay? That's, remember, that's going across the periods. Period three or below, okay? You cannot expand the octet, have more than eight on really small central atoms, okay? You can't do it in period one. You can't do it in period two. But by the time you get to period three, the, atom, the central atom is probably large enough to handle expanded octets or when the central atom has more than eight valence electrons. So in my notes here, when do you, can you have more than an octet? Okay, when the central atom... is in period three or below. When can you have less than an octet? When your central atom is beryllium, a boron or beryllium and you have something that's really electronegative as your non-central atoms. And in my class and most classes in introductory chemistry, you'll never have to deal with an odd number of electrons. So if you ever get an odd number of electrons, ding, 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 you're probably doing something wrong. So I hope this helped you understand when you can have less than an octet and more than an octet. And hopefully this helps your covalent bonding and the way you understand it. And if this, if, if this video has helped you understand exceptions to the octet rule, please do a like and subscribe. Please share it, okay? This helps the YouTube algorithm get this information out to other students that might want to be interested in doing a quick review on exceptions to the octet rule.